Welcome, medical students, to today's lecture on the fascinating topic of esophageal webs. In this comprehensive session, we will delve deep into the intricacies of esophageal anatomy, dysphagia, plumber vinson syndrome, etiology and pathogenesis, clinical manifestations, diagnostic approaches, differential diagnosis, complications, treatment options, prognosis and follow-up, molecular pathways involved in esophageal web formation, as well as radiological classification systems for esophageal webs. So, let us embark on this journey together and expand our knowledge in the field of gastroenterology. The esophagus is a tube that carries food from the throat to the stomach. It has four layers, the inner layer protects against damage, the middle layer contains blood vessels and nerves, the outer layer has muscle fibers for movement, and the outermost layer provides support. Knowing the esophagus's structure is important for understanding conditions like esophageal webs, dysphagia, or difficulty swallowing, is a common presenting symptom in patients with esophageal webs. This condition can be categorized based on the level of obstruction, including oropharyngeal dysphagia, esophageal dysphagia, and functional dysphagia. In the case of esophageal webs, which often occur in the upper or middle third of the esophagus, patients typically experience progressive dysphagia for solid food. When evaluating a patient with dysphagia, it is important to consider other potential causes, such as esophageal strictures, rings, or malignancies, as they may present with similar symptoms. A thorough clinical history, physical examination, and diagnostic tests are necessary to differentiate esophageal webs from other conditions. plumber vinson syndrome, also known as Patterson-Brown-Kelly syndrome, is a rare disorder characterized by the triad of dysphagia, iron deficiency anemia, and esophageal webs. The exact etiology of this syndrome remains unclear, although it is believed to involve a combination of genetic predisposition, nutritional deficiencies, and autoimmune factors. The presence of esophageal webs in plumber vinson syndrome contributes to the development of dysphagia. Iron deficiency anemia, often associated with chronic blood loss due to gastrointestinal bleeding or inadequate iron intake, further exacerbates the symptoms. The interplay between iron deficiency and the formation of esophageal webs is not fully understood but is likely multifactorial. Esophageal webs can form due to genetic factors, nutritional deficiencies, and autoimmune processes. Certain genes may predispose individuals to develop webs, while malnutrition, particularly deficiencies in iron and other micronutrients, can disrupt the normal maintenance and repair of esophageal tissue. Autoimmune damage to the esophageal mucosa may also contribute to web formation. Further research is needed to fully understand these mechanisms and their clinical significance. Esophageal webs are diagnosed through clinical manifestations. Dysphagia for solids is the most common symptom, often accompanied by a sensation of food sticking in the chest or throat. Weight loss and glossitis may also occur. Timely recognition aids in diagnosis and management. A diagnostic approach for esophageal webs involves a barium swallow to visualize the esophagus and identify webs, and esophagoscopy to directly visualize and obtain biopsy samples for confirmation and further evaluation. These tests help clinicians accurately diagnose and plan treatment for esophageal webs. When evaluating a patient with dysphagia and suspected esophageal webs, it is important to consider other possible diagnoses. Esophageal strictures, caused by the narrowing of the esophagus due to scar tissue formation, can mimic the symptoms of esophageal webs. Additionally, esophageal rings, which are thin, circumferential bands of tissue, may present similarly. Malignancies, particularly esophageal squamous cell carcinoma or adenocarcinoma, should also be considered in the differential diagnosis. These malignant lesions can cause dysphagia and lead to anatomical abnormalities resembling esophageal webs on imaging studies. Therefore, a high index of suspicion is crucial, and appropriate diagnostic tests, such as biopsies, should be performed to rule out malignancies. Careful evaluation and differentiation of these conditions are essential for appropriate management and prognosis. Esophageal webs can cause complications including complete blockage of the esophagus, upper gastrointestinal bleeding, and aspiration pneumonia. These complications can lead to difficulty swallowing, anemia, and lung infections, highlighting the importance of early diagnosis and treatment. To manage esophageal webs, dietary changes, iron supplementation, endoscopic dilation, and surgery are considered. Individualized treatment plans are based on symptom severity, complications, and patient factors, aiming to improve swallowing and overall quality of life. The prognosis for patients with esophageal webs is generally good with proper treatment. Long-term monitoring is important to detect complications or recurrence. Regular esophagoscopy and imaging can assess procedure success and find early signs of narrowing. Education on diet, hydration, and iron supplementation is crucial. 
monitoring and intervention for complications are important for optimal outcomes. The development of esophageal webs involves complex cellular and molecular processes. Research suggests that molecules such as transforming growth factor beta, cytokines, growth factors, and matrix metalloproteinases may contribute to their formation. Understanding these pathways could lead to new treatment options. Radiological imaging is essential for diagnosing and assessing esophageal webs. The Kimura Mukiyama classification categorizes them into three types based on location and morphology. The Eckert Levin system grades webs according to narrowing severity, helping guide treatment decisions and predict outcomes. In conclusion, understanding esophageal webs is crucial for providing optimal care. This lecture aims to equip medical students with knowledge of the complexities, diagnosis, treatment, and management. Further research is needed for improved patient outcomes. Embrace this knowledge for your future medical practice in gastroenterology.